In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate corridor amortization when it comes to computing pension expense. So the first things we're going to need to know are the market value of the pension plan's assets, and we're also going to need to know the PBO, the projected benefit obligation of the firm. And so we're going to take the larger of those two amounts, right? So the larger of these two, and then we're going to take 10% of that. So the larger of these two, take 10%. So 10% of the la So we see that 600,000 is more than 450,000. So we're going to take 10% times 600,000 and that's going to give us $60,000. Now this is the threshold. This $60,000 is the threshold against which we're going to compare our accumulated other comprehensive income account as it pertains to the actuarial gains or losses. Remember we talked about in previous videos the net actuarial gains or losses. Now those gains or losses could come from the actuaries making a mistake and their assumptions, but a lot of times it comes from the difference between the expected return and the actual return on our plan assets, right? So remember we said we're, we're trying to smooth volatility by not immediately recognizing gains or losses as they occur, right? So if your expected return is 10% and it's only four, you know, you, you've undershot that, but we're not gonna make you book that immediately. However, when it gets outside this corridor, and in this case, the quarter, we've got this 60,000. So if the amount in accumulated our comprehensive income gets outside 60,000, then we're going to make you we're going to make the firm recognize the amount to the extent that it's above 60,000, right? However, we see here that our beginning balance of the accumulated other comprehensive income for net actuarial gains and losses is $35,000. And when I say loss, I mean that we we basically have a debit balance. So if we were to picture the T account, we'd have our AOCI right here and then we'd have a debit balance of $35,000. We've accumulated $35,000 of losses there, right? But that does not exceed the $60,000 court. It, it doesn't get outside the corridor, so we don't have to book any of this to pension expense, right? Now let's look, let's look at another year. So let's look at the next year, and let's say that now the market value of the plan assets is now $400,000, and the PBO is 700,000, and then we've got a new balance for our accumulated other comprehensive income. Okay, now what do we do to see if we have some corridor amortization? Well, again, we, we first go and we say, all right, we're gonna need to calculate 10% of the larger of these two numbers, which in this case is 700,000. So we're gonna take 10%, we're gonna multiply that by $700,000, and that's gonna give us 70,000. That's our corridor, right? Now, let's look at accumulated other comprehensive income and see what's going on there. So our AOCI, we see that we have a debit balance of $90,000. And now we see that 90,000 90, is greater than 70,000. By how much? Well, if we subtract them, we see it's greater by $20,000. So we can say that by $20,000, we've exceeded the corridor. And what does that mean? Well, we're going to have to recognize some of this $20,000. How much? Well, that depends on the average remaining service period of our employees. So let's say that we, we've deemed that to be 20 years, right? So then we're going to take this 20000 which is the amount of the AOCI that exceeds the corridor that we calculated here, that 20000 and we're going to divide it by the average remaining service period of 20 years. And that's going to give us 20000 divided by 20 is $1,000. So we're going to have to make an entry right now to record this $1,000. Okay, and that's actually, so what we're going to do is to amortize this. Obviously, we want to decrease this 90000 debit balance. That means we're going to make a credit to this AOCI of 1,000, right? So let's let's think about our journal entry here. So we've got AOCI being credited for 1,000. And then what are we gonna debit? We're gonna debit pension expense. 
right? Because this is, we, we, we normally, we were just ignoring and not booking this to an expense because we said, you know what, we want to smooth things out. We don't want a lot of volatility for, for the earnings. And so we're not going to recognize any gains or losses until they get outside the corridor. Well, guess what? We went outside the corridor by 20,000. But again, we, we don't immediately book the whole 20,000. I mean, the, the firm could do that, right? And some firms do. The corridor amortization we calculated here is the minimum. This is the minimum that the firm needs to recognize, right? They, they are forced now to say, look, you know, we went outside of what our estimates were. Either the actuaries made some mistakes or our expected return was a lot higher than what the actual return was. And so we've got some losses here and they're they're high enough that they're you know greater than you know 10 percent of the higher of the pbo or the market value so now we're going to debit pension expense for a thousand dollars credit aoci for a thousand and if if this continues over time assuming everything else were, remain the same over 20 years we would eventually get this down to seven seventy thousand but of course next year Probably the PBO is going to change, the market value of plan assets will change, the AOCI will change, and we're going to recompute. We're going to go and, and go through the same process, take 10% of the greater of these two numbers, you know, that's our corridor, then we're going to go to AOCI, see how much we exceed it, and then divide by the average remaining service period.